I'm traveling from Delhi to Raipur in Chhattisgarh today and I'm gonna take you guys on the journey with me. I'll show you how to fly domestically here in India. And I'll take you over everything you need to know like terminals, food, which airlines to use, how to book, everything, okay? And actually I have this travel goal to visit every single union territory and state here in India. And I just got three more to go including Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Lakshadweep. Then I visited every single state and UT here in India. Let's get started, nah? Now guys, the first thing to note when you arrive at the airport, you can't get through these gates without your passport and your boarding card. I know it's a little bit different to overseas, but you've got to have the passport and the boarding card or any kind of form of identification if you're an Indian. But for a foreigner, it's best to use your passport. And actually there are multiple terminals at, for example, the Delhi and Mumbai airports. And domestic flights leave from both these terminals. Domestic flights also leave from the international terminals here in India too. So it can get quite confusing. So here at Delhi we have Terminal 1, 2 and 3. Terminal 2 is a domestic airport and Terminal 3 that is known as the international airport. But domestic flights leave from the international airport as well, okay? So it can get confusing so just make sure you check what terminal you're leaving from, okay? Today I'm leaving from Terminal 2, which is the kind of official domestic terminal. Now once you're in the airport, it's really quite simple. You've got signs here in English, you've got the toilets over here, and then you just have the, the check-in counters. Just like normal, just go and check in, drop your bags off and head to security. Yes, okay. Thank you, dude, thank you. So once you've got your boarding pass, it's really easy. You just gotta show your ID and they'll print your ticket off for you. Then you've gotta come through security here and get your bag screened before you can get to the gate. Now once you're through security, there's usually a pretty good food court and pretty good shopping options here. So you've got like McDonald's, you've got like Pizza Hut, you've got like Subway here. Then a bunch of shops as well. The food court's really good at this Delhi domestic airport. But actually I always have a problem when I go through security. So. Whenever I'm carrying my drone, they always stop me. They always want to double check me just because of the drone. But I can confirm you can carry a drone here on flights. It's, it's okay, but you will get extra scrutiny when you come through security, which is a pain. And actually, some airports like in Goa, they will ask you to scan your chicken baggage as soon as you enter the airport, and then you hand that over to the chicken staff. So there's like double security at some airports here. Let's go find somewhere kind of quiet and sit down and talk about airlines here in India and which ones are safe to take. Now guys, you have to be very careful with what airline you choose here in India. There's been a number of problems in the past. So for example, Kingfisher Airline went bust and a lot of people lost their money, including some of my friends who were staff there. They haven't seen their paychecks. And this guy Vijay Malia, he has just run away to England. He's a fugitive there. And there are so many fugitives from India living in England actually and it's shameful and it takes so long to get them extradited here to India. It seems to be a safe haven for Indian fugitives. England. And also there's another airline that came into financial problems recently, Jet Airways. Do not book with Jet Airways. They cancelled my flights but luckily I got a refund but their, their airline's dead, they're a gone airline. Do not trust your money with them anymore. The best two airlines is probably Indigo and Vistara. Indigo is cheap, it's usually on time, and the service is pretty good. Then you've got Vistara, and Vistara is it's a new airline. It's a JV, a joint venture between Singapore Airlines and Rata and Tata. And Tata is a very, very famous uh, industrialist here in India. He's one of the richest people in India. Actually, he's a, he's a Parsi guy. So be careful of what airlines you choose. You also have Air India and SpiceJet. Air India is famous for not being on time, okay, so it's, it's a good carrier though, I've never had issues with them. Same with SpiceJet, but yeah, I can vouch for Indigo and Vistara as being good airlines to take here. When it comes to food options, you can get a pizza here at 6am in the morning, but when it comes to airlines, only Air India and Vistara are going to give you a free meal if it's a longer flight, like over 90 minutes. Anything under that, and they're going to give you like a snack, like peanuts and a drink. All the other airlines, they are going to charge you food. You can buy like a masala chai for 100 rupees, a sandwich for 150 rupees. So where to book 
airline tickets. Well, you've got ClearTrip and MakeMyTrip.com. They're gonna charge you like a 400 rupee convenience fee for booking with them. But I always book directly. So I book to this flight with Indigo. And the best thing about booking directly is you can buy a flexi ticket. You can't get flexi tickets on these other online portals. And a flexi ticket allows me to change my, or change the date of my travel to whatever I want without paying any extra, you know? So that's what I need. I need that flexibility. So if you need flexibility, and it's only like a thousand rupees more to get that flexibility, book directly through the airline's websites. And actually there's no kind of foolproof way to get cheap tickets, okay? You have to book as far out as possible. That's the only way I know. So one to two months before you travel domestically or internationally, like five or six months before you travel, that's when you're gonna get the cheapest airline prices. And I nearly forgot to mention, most domestic Indian airports have Wi-Fi. Do not worry about that. That's like become the most important thing these days for us, right? Get here, download some Netflix, watch it on the plane. People love to rush to queue the plane right there. I always wait to the end because what's the point of just standing there? I wait until everyone's gone, then I board the plane. My seat is still gonna be there, right? It's an allocated seat, so what's the point of standing there and queuing for so long now? Nice to meet you. Yes, Thank you. Man. Thank you. Bye. We're in the air now, and the air are bringing around the food options. And actually, just speaking about seating right here, so I like to have the aisle seat. I always take the aisle seat if I can because it's easy to get out, right? I can get access to my bag, I can get access to the bathroom, and out of the push past people. And you can get out of the plane quicker as well. I find like the middle seat that I'm in right now, it depends who you're sitting next to. I'm sitting next to two great gentlemen today, so there's no issues. But sometimes they will hog these armrests, right? And you might just be like huddled in here, and yeah, you, you're kind of, kind of just stuck the entire ride and it's not so comfortable so yeah I find the aisle seat the most comfortable by far. Ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we have now arrived at Swami Vivekananda airport. Alright, I'm here in Raipo, Ram Ram Raipo, what is up? You guys have a pretty nice airport too. It's not too bad here. Pretty sweet. Now, if you guys want to learn more about arriving at an Indian airport, I've got a video on that too. I arrived at New Delhi at 2 a.m. in the morning. Probably the most difficult time because you're so jet lagged. Go check that out. My channel's got a bunch of tips for those of you coming here to India. And of course, go to indiasurvivalguide.com and get my quick start safety guide so you can travel safely and confidently here in incredible India. Jay Hind and enjoy your time.